What's up everyone, it's Sam from 64 Wheels, back in more diecast, and today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing the complete 10 car set of Wave 3 of the 2023 Hot Wheels Fast and the Furious Walmart exclusive line. So it's hard to believe we've already gotten 30 cars from the Hot Wheels line this year because usually we get anywhere from 8 to 5 cars, but this year we've gotten 30, and if you count the 9 or 10 packs or whatever, we've gotten almost 40 cars, which is just insane. But these cars seem to be getting better and better with each release and this wave is no different so we have multiple new castings to the Hot Wheels lineup in general as well as new castings to the Hot Wheels basic line so I'm really excited to get into these open them up take a look at it we're going to compare the new releases to the older releases to see what they did right what they did wrong and just take a look at some of the history of the Fast and the Furious models in general in this wave so I'm really excited to get into this one so let's do it all right, so like I said, this is the third wave of these cars. Um, I've been having an insane time finding these in stores. In fact, I've never found them in stores. So out of the three waves that they've released so far, I found just two or three cars from the very first wave. And it was the usual peg warmers, which is like the Ice Charger, the Blue Ford Escort, and like the Torino or something like that. Um, basically cars no one wants and that they've done too many times. But those versions did look good, so they were worth picking up still. Um, but I never saw the rest of wave one like the eclipse the rx7 i never saw any of wave two and now wave three is out so unfortunately like many people i've been having to go to ebay to buy these and i've had to pay an extra cost for them so in the store these are retailing for right around 375 i believe is what they're going for now in 2023 um on ebay i bought the whole case like a unsealed box or whatever um from just a private seller on ebay and it costs around a hundred 10 to 120 dollars shipped so if you had 15 dollars so for shipping each of these cars are costing roughly 10 to 11 dollars to get online which is three times the retail price which is absolutely insane but if you're a collector like me who is trying to collect the entire fast and furious line or just want some of these cars in general you might have to bite the bullet and get them off ebay or just really stick to your walmart stores and try to pick them up but since I didn't think I was going to find any of them, I just went ahead and ordered them. So let's go ahead and take a look at the cars. So like I said, 10 car set. This is nothing new to Fast and the Furious collectors. Here is the back of the card. You can kind of see all the art. There is the barcode if you need to scan it. Uh, these appear to be international cards. I don't know if there's a difference if they're all international cards or not, because I haven't found any in stores to really compare them to, at least of this way. So the first one. 70 Dodge Charger RT. This is the classic Fast and the Furious Charger. I'm excited to unbox this one because they have updated a few of the tampos on this one. Um, so that should be a good one. Next up, Suki's S2000 from Too Fast, Too Furious. Again, um, they've updated the wheels, added a couple tampos that should make this one of the best, if not the best basic release of that car. Third, 3 of 10, the Mazda RX-8, which is uh, I'm probably going to say Nila, I think was her name, um, in Tokyo Drift. This is the car that they shot the Togue scene in with her and Sean kind of like drifting down the mountain, uh, having a little bit of like a, a moment there. But we don't see a ton of this car, but it's cool because this is Hot Wheels' first RX-8 casting in any direction, uh, basic or premium, and it's cool that they're releasing it to the Fast and the Furious line. So that should be a fun one to get into. Next up, the 69 Camaro. And for you Hot Rod fans, you will know that this is a replica of the big red Camaro, probably the ultimate 69 Camaro Pro Touring. It's gone from like 500 cubic inches to, I don't know, it's just an insane car in real life. It's gone over 250 miles an hour. And luckily for us, it did a co-star roll in Fast and the Furious 4. So now we get a unauthorized kind of um, scaled down version of it, but it's really cool that we are getting this one. So I'm excited to open that one. Next up is another new casting in the Hot Wheels line in general, as well as the Fast and the Furious line, the 71 Hacko 2000 GTR. So this is an interesting casting because they updated it and took the oil cooler off the front. So this is the stock version, not the race version like previously released. So they are actually getting more accurate with these as time goes on. So we'll compare this to the other release as well. Next up is a Fast and Furious classic, the GTR, the R35. So this is the, I think, third time this has been released in general. Um, nothing too crazy, but I believe 
Again, better tampos and probably a little bit better wheel choice, so we'll pop that one open. Next up, the Bugatti, the Veyron. This is the first time in the Fast and the Furious line. So this is the white version. This is, I think, now the third or fourth different uh, sculpt of this casting that we've gotten. So this is a little bit different than the one that they released in black and orange from a year or two ago. So this is new to the line and new in general, but look at that. I mean, this is gonna be so hard to find in stores. So um, next up, the 15 Mercedes-Benz AMG GT. This is the third time they've released this one, but again, extra tampos, probably better wheel choice on this line. Next up is one of the, I don't know, both of these to me are the most boring in the in the lineup just because they don't have flashy paint jobs or anything like that, but the 17 Acura NSX. This is the first time we're getting it in the basic line. We've gotten two premiums before, and surprisingly, I think this one has the most accurate wheels of the entire line, so we'll open that one up. And finally, uh, one you might recognize as the uh, Fung Fuguzi, I believe it is, the custom Datsun 240Z. Well, this is the Datsun 240Z Custom that was in Fast X. This was... Oh man, I'm totally blanking on her name, but she was a new character in Fast X and she drove this car and this is an actual different casting. As you can see, there's a turbo setup coming out of the hood. So really excited to open all these. Um, so let's get into it. So first off, we will open the 70 Charger. Um, this is a pretty classic one. It's been included probably the most in all the different variations of the line. It came out first in the very first wave in 2013 as well as a main line. But you will notice this one looks extra good. It does have the uh, hood pin tampos as almost all the previous other versions have. It has the RT, which looks pretty sharp. It has the marker lights, um, but you'll notice new to this one that they have never had in the basic lineup before is the black painted rear tail panel as well as the painted tail lights, the little Dodge logo. So that is updated. They also painted the gas cap. So if we take a look at the very first release, which a lot of the cars from the very first release are the best of the best. Um, so they're kind of just that really standard to beat. So here, as you can see, the, the tampos on the side actually look better on the new one. One of the things that's changed is that they did not black out the grill. So they basically, instead of blacking out the grill, gave us the extra red and other tampos in the back. I personally like the blacked out grill. I think it does make a big difference, but... I think for the overall look of the car, the tail lights are the biggest change. So that is just not all chrome. Um, you can kind of get away with the grill looking chrome, or you could even like customize that yourself if you wanted. It's harder to customize the back. So in my opinion, I think this latest release is probably the best one um, just because of those rear tampo changes. I do like the front, but I think uh, everything considered the back one is the probably the way to go. So that's pretty cool. They've already updated it on the very first one. This is a killer casting. Again, can't go wrong with the classic uh, 70 Charger from Fast One. So, all right, Suki's car. So this is the S2000 from Too Fast, Too Furious. We have gotten this release now uh, four times. This is the fifth time, actually. So the first one, we'll, we'll actually, let me open it and then we'll compare them. So as you can see, that car dart, it's got tampos all around. Let's go ahead and pop it over for a closer look. So as you can see, this does have the, um, like, I guess they would call it not the mesh wheels, but like the, uh, I guess they call them mesh wheels. I'll have to put the actual um, name up here. I don't think they're wire wheels. I can't remember what they're called. Um, but you can see this car has detail on almost every corner of it. It has headlights, taillights. On the side, it has that little anime character that's been airbrushed and the lines up top, which if you've collected this line, you'll know that a lot of times they skimp on the roof, trunk, and hood tampo. So it's nice to see this car have it all the way around. So... If we take a look at the very first release of this casting back in 2016 from this very same line, you can see quite a few changes. So we have a change to the color overall. This one is a much lighter, uh, almost like a metallic pink where this one is a bubblegum pink. You can see that the tampos uh, look very similar, but it might have a little more detail on the new one. They lost the um, Universal Studios watermark that they put on these for a couple years, and they did that to a lot of cars, um, but this one does not have that. But when we look on top, the biggest change is that they added the tampos on the top, which is really nice because the basics have never got this before. And then when we flip it over, you can see that this is also a first 
for a full rear tampo. This had the uh, third brake light, which I think is kind of odd that they didn't do anything else on that one. Um, but this one, you can see it actually has the Honda logo painted, painted taillights and everything. So this is looking really good. So if we compare it to the last one that got released, um, the wheels are much better. I think this is probably the closest to the movie one. They were nine spoke, double spoke wheels. So these aren't quite it. And the first one aren't it either. So probably this one is, is the closer of the two, at least for basic. And there you can see if we can compare all three colors, all three colors are really different. So the first one is a bit of a, almost like a purple bubblegum pink. The next one is a, a little similar. Um, I don't know if it comes through on the camera. It's very close, but it is a bit different. And then this one you can tell is a lot different. So again, we have three different wheel choices. Um, tampo choices on the new one um, are the best so far of the basics. So let me go ahead and set these back here. And then we'll look at the premium. Um, like I said, this is the fifth version of this car, the premium. I do like the premium wheels. I think they look good. Um, but the size of the uh, the mainline, the basic, are probably more realistic. Um, but there you can see, even on the premium, they put the, bar the mark on it, which this came out in 2020. Again, look, it has the same type of tampos up top. I think this is probably the closest... Um, color wise to the actual movie because it was like that bright neon pink uh, it did I think add some pink seats in the interior and stuff too um, first off a lot of people know that this is not the convertible version which in the the movie her car was the convertible version and it had the convertible like top down so this I know all s2000 are technically convertible but this has the hard top in place so it's technically not correct um, but they've done a lot of different versions of it. But this one, I think the premium is still the way to go. But if you go basic on um, this one, I do also have the NFT garage version of it, of uh, the premium S2000 that I just got in the mail. I need to open and we'll be doing an unboxing soon. But that one is a little more fantasy wise in that it has a metallic, like almost like a Spectre Flame paint job. So I still think that the uh, premium here will be the way to go. And then basic wise, I would probably say this one has the best detail to date. So again, two for two on this one. I think we're 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 working out. This is working out really well for this line. So next up, the RX8. So like I said, this is a Tokyo drift car. Um, it did not get a lot of screen time. Uh, it was in a couple scenes, but it didn't get as much screen time as some of the other, like you know, the Charger, the S2000, or something. Um, so let's check this out. So this is a totally new casting. It does have a metal wing. It's got that nice. Um, gradient spray painted paint job from blue to black. It looks good. Um, it has detail on the back. There you can see it says RX8. It's got the Mazda logo. It's got the tail lights, which look good. It looks like they are the actual um, Tampo like ink stamped ones rather than the ink jet ones of some of the premiums that look really bad. But overall, this is looking pretty good. I don't remember which wheels this had in the movie because it wasn't in the movie for that long. Um, but I think the wheels they picked look decent for it. And I think the casting itself looks pretty good. I mean, that looks like an RX-8 with a body kit. So uh, this will probably be a pretty popular casting just because it is the very first one. And people are really hype over Tokyo Drift. Um, they really like the JDM vibe of that movie, as I mean, as do I. Um, so this one will probably be a really hot seller. But overall, a good casting. It's not bad. It's got a detailed interior. It's a little hard to see because the windows are tinted a really dark um, shade of like gray or black, but it looks good. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on this casting in the comments, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it because it has tampos all around too. Really good first showing for that casting. So next up, the 69 Camaro. Now this casting has been released, I mean, countless, countless times in the main line and other lines, but we've never got it in the Fast and the Furious line in this release. So we've got it in the Yanko Camaro version. That's like the, the blue. It's been two different colors, but this is the first time we're getting it as the big red style Camaro. So another thing about these, tampos all the way around. So this has the SS RS style hideaway headlights with the fog lights. It's got the full stripes, hood pins, the one on the side, the big one. It says Camaro Z28. It's got the gold wheels. It's got the marker lights. It has a full painted rear uh, looks good. I mean, that looks not too bad. Mine has a little bit of a hiccup right here in the paint. Like it's almost like casted funny, as you can see, like the paint has a little bit of a hiccup, uh, which sucks for $10. Um, but I'm more willing to accept 
uh, you know, little hiccups like that on these cheaper lines, rather than if I find that on like the NFT garage card that was like 300 bucks, then I'm going to throw a fit. But in real life, this Camaro is so badass. I'm happy to have a version of it. Uh, I wish mine was a little bit better, but as a first showing, I think they did this um, they did this justice in giving it front and back, side, top, whatever tampos. Um, looks pretty good. I like it. Cool. Man, that looks good. Okay, next up, the 71 Skyline. So this is going to be a good casting because this means that Hot Wheels now has the stock version of this car to release in other lines because of the Fast and the Furious line. So let's go ahead and take a close look at this one. So it has tampos. Um, up front, but those are the inkjet printed tampos. So when we compare those tampos um, to like the RX-8 right there, do you see how they're like stamped and they're pretty clear, even though maybe they're not the sharpest? Um, when we look at the skylines right there, you can clearly tell that those are the printer style uh, tampos. I don't know, are these made in two different places? Malaysia? Malaysia, no, they're made in the same place. So they must be choosing to do um, different style tampos on different cars for cost reasons. Um, but there you can see it does have a detailed grill. It says GTR, but it's really hard to see because of those tampos. It says Skyline on the side, which is pretty le legible. I'm not too mad about that one. It has painted door handles, and it also does have those printer style tampos out back. But I think black cars hide them a little better. Um, I'm still not really pumped on how like grainy they are on the outline of the lights. Um, but this casting... Looks pretty good. It's got silver around uh, the window there. Not too bad. So the first time they released this was in 2018 in the same set as the last S2000. Um, so there you can see it. They've kind of toned down, um, I think so. No, the wheel arches actually look the same, but they have put a back bumper on it. As you can see, it's chrome, which is the interior piece. So the back bumper is part of the interior piece. They have gave it a little bit different um, chassis because there you can see it has exhaust coming out uh, but they made the whole middle of it flat which took a lot of this detail out which is cool on the original one I'm I wish they would have left it but I'm sure it was a cost saving thing because there's a lot of detail missing from the chassis and since they were retooling it anyways for the front and rear I'm sure they uh, decided to cut that out but there you can see the difference there um, I like those style tampos much better, even though the color on the, the new one looks a little better. Um, but there you can see the bumper. I think everything else um, is the same there. And then go to the front is where the biggest um, difference is. So there you can see that oil cooler um, up front, huge difference. So it has like the headlight covers on it too, where now you have the circle headlights of the old one and no oil cooler. But let me see. Oh no, it does actually have indentions there. So it's not just a tampo. You can see the um, convex like shape of the lights there. So those are actually different. And check those out. The fender mirrors, that is cool. Where the old one doesn't have that, the new one does. So I much rather have fender mirrors than the underneath detail. So even though they took some of it away, they made the casting overall better. Um, and I think this looks great. Uh, for a dollar or three dollars or whatever it is because hopefully that means this will make it into the basics line or other lines like this um, but this is a nice casting I mean the mirrors are awesome they need to put mirrors on more cars again stepping it up they've every car we've opened so far has been a better or a good version of whatever's released so they've made the um, S2000 better and they've made the Skyline better Charger 2 I mean really they're they're on a roll with this line so Next up is a 2009 GTR. So they're saying this is from Fast and Furious 6, which I assume is the same car at the end of Fast and Furious 5, which is the one that they released in the very first one back in 2013. And we will take a look at that version as well as the uh, version they have released since. So this is the older R35. This is like the early generation R35 casting. Um, it was pretty hard to find before they did the newer one in 2017. Uh, the prices of these went up quite a bit for a while. Um, there you can see this one has the printer style tampos on it as well. Not very clear, but it has clear headlights. Um, not a ton of detail on this one. So let's take a look at it compared to the 2013 release, which was the very first release of this in the Fast and the Furious line. Um, so front, not too much. It actually looks like they might have retooled the front bumper a bit because it looks a lot thicker. 
Um, I don't know. You tell me. It looks like that to me in real life, though. Um, the rest of the casting, uh, I don't really see any big changes. Uh, I think this one, the new one, is a lot more metallic. I think I like the wheels on the old one better. They both sit a little high. Um, but the tampos on the old one, uh, even though they're really both not that good, um, the new printer style really makes everything uh, illegible and odd. Like you can't even see the Nissan logo there on the trunk. The GTR looks not that good. And then when you compare it to the old ink style tampos, you can see the headlights or the taillights are, are red. The GTR looks kind of okay. And the Nissan, again, is off space and illegible. So um, this one... Uh, it doesn't, like, I don't really see a clear winner. Let's go ahead and compare it to the one from, I think this is 2018 as well. Um, this one, I think, is probably, um, yeah, so it still has the printer style tampos, but they look much better. So I think if you're going to go for one of the basic GTRs, I would go for the one in the 2025 car set uh, because it looks to, at least on across all my versions, um, they are all a bit, little bit different color, but it has the best taillight and um, tampos on the rear end. So I would probably lean towards that one, um, which has the five spoke wheels on it. I think that's the better one, uh, but it all could depend on the type of tampos you get. Um, but the new one isn't bad. So if you're looking for a cheap alternative, if you can pick this new one up, that might be the way to go. But it, I like the, I think I like the 2020 better. Okay, the Bugatti. So I do not have one of these open to compare one of the old castings, but this is the first time in the Fast and Furious line. So we'll kind of just get a baseline from this car. So this was a car in Fast 7 or Furious 7 that uh, I think Roman drove this one up to uh, Dubai, like in the little like uh, convoy they did up to the casino or whatever before they jumped the Lycan through the through the building in that insane scene but this car looks pretty good um when this first came out it was so ugly i saw so many of these on pegs um the red and black ones when they first came out but they, it was such an ugly casting i passed on them all like this had like a little tip to it it was pointed up it just looked terrible and they have done so much better casting on this casting so overall it just is shaped better it's got a better rear um engine cover with like the little scoops the front end looks so much better. The tampos look nice. You can kind of see it says Bugatti there, but that is so tiny. Again, I give them a little bit of leeway because this is a $3 car and not a $10 car, um, but it does have a little bit of drippies on the uh, tampos there on the headlights, which means it is the classic ink style tampos rather than the inkjet printer style. And there on the back, you can see the Bugatti logo and it does have silver taillights. I don't know if the real car has silver taillights, um, I was expecting red, but I at least there is some uh, tampos there. This casting, like the paint on this one is not the best. There's a few hiccups on the rear end. Uh, but overall, this is a very slick looking casting. And white is kind of a hype color for supercars and cars in general, I feel like. But this looks awesome. It really does. They did a great job on it. There is the base. Not too bad. Again, mirrors. I don't remember if the original one had mirrors, but this looks awesome that it has mirrors. So Hot Wheels is stepping it up in the casting game. They're correcting issues from old ones and doing, I mean, I don't mind the inkjet printer tampos on these. So as long as they keep doing stuff like that, I'm going to keep buying these cars. But man, that's a nice release. I'll never, absolutely never find that in store. So next up are two of what I call like the boring re-releases. Uh, the 15 Mercedes AMG GT from Fate of the Furious. So I believe this is a Tej car in that scene in the, where they're um, like, I don't know what it, like spear, spearing the black roadrunner that Dom is in with the like, with the God's eye or whatever it is. Um, in the middle of the street and then all the cars get destroyed um, so this is the third release of this car we've gotten the first one was 2019 in the basic line the, in the actual basic line in the main line so this came out um, it is a flat silver where this one is a gloss silver you can see it has pr5s compared to the um, different wheels on this one the tampos um i think the tampos on the new one are better but they are Oh, no, they look stamped. Are they stamped? Yeah, they are stamped. So just like this one, they're stamped. I think the Mercedes-Benz logo and the AMG and the grill um, it looks brighter on this one, but this is more accurate. And actually, I think it they did a better job. It just looks 
a little bit more brighter on the old one. On the new one, they both have stripes. This one stripes are really off, but it has the Mercedes logo. It has the stripes and it has taillights. So the next version of this car we got was in the 2025 car set from Walmart, uh, which is closer to this car. So they have the same wheels. Um, basically everything is the same, the style of Tampos, but it doesn't have taillights or that rear uh, Mercedes Benz logo. So if you're looking for the best version of this Mercedes, skip the 18 or skip the 19, skip the 20, go to this year's and get the new one because it does have all the features the other ones have plus those awesome taillights. So again, another win for that one. That looking good. So next up, the 2017 Acura NSX. So I believe this is the first time we've ever gotten this in the basic line. It's been released as like a main line and stuff before, but never in the basic in the Fast and the Furious line. We've gotten two versions of it in premium. I think it was 2020 and then 2022 or 23. So this is the newest one. Um, so we'll take a look at it here. Uh, you can see really the tampos on the basic and the premium are not that far off. They really aren't. Um, as for the wheels in the movie, the basic actually has the more realistic. These are the classic like Shelby style racing wheels. Hate those wheels. Um, so I, I would not buy this casting, but, um, again, look at the, like, look at the Tampo style. If you didn't know one was a premium, like if you hold it right there and I didn't tell you one had a plastic and a metal base, you really wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Um, so if we take the newest version of this car and look at it, I think the same thing. I think the Tampos are really, I mean, really comparable. The back, I mean, other than that, they're a little more colorful. I think the basic has just as good tampos as the premium. So if we look on the bottom, I mean, really, if I was going to buy a version of this car, your premium version would be the newest one with these 10 spokes. But if I was going to buy just one version of it, I would probably buy this basic because the wheels look closest to the actual movie car and it has the tampos that are the same as the premium. So this is another win. This is a great lineup. So if you're looking for that NSX, I would skip the premiums and go straight to that basic because it's it's just as good, seriously. So last up, the Datsun 240Z Custom. So I wanted to compare this real quick to the Custom Datsun 240Z. So you can see they are two different castings. This one, the original one, has a 2016 model year on the base. The new one, which has a different chassis. Again, they've cut a lot of the detail out. This is a Datsun 240Z Custom. So they basically like switched around the name and made two castings. So there you can see that this is definitely the same casting as the Fugu Z, I think is how you say it. Um, but everything else uh, looks pretty much the same. Um, it's missing the mirrors, which is a bummer because it kind of took, they took a lot of metal out of it because now it doesn't have any mirrors and they took a spot out of the hood. So that just must have been the cost of retooling it um, to get the turbo in the hood. Well, let's go ahead and open this. So this makes an appearance in Fast X at the street race scene. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. I mean, it's been out for months now on streaming and stuff. Um, but the car looks good. It's not, to me, this version looks a little bit more uh, JDM and cooler, like better done than the one in the movie. The one in the movie was a little more like racy. This is a more like uh, touring to me. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but overall, good details, good tampos. Like look at that, very clear tampos out back. It's got the yellow plastic base. Uh, it does have that turbo sticking through the hood, which is nice detail. So they did do a new... Um, mold for this the mirrors are gone as you can see but everything else remains so um i don't remember which wheels it had in the movie but this are i think these are the 10 spokes um in black it's got a black interior piece uh, the windows on these are tinted so dark that it's hard to see the actual interior um, but it looks to be the exact same as the previous release so for a first release in the fast and the furious line um it, it looks great i don't know what i would change on it other than maybe adding like a license plate or some marker lights or maybe headlight tampos or something um, but to get a brand new casting with tampos and some edits here you know a different sculpt is not bad um i'll take it and then we can kind of compare if they release it again to whatever gets released in the future because this is a pretty good benchmark for it pretty simple but it does the job so and it rolls pretty well so there it is there is the full 10 car set so we went over a lot of the previous castings 
um, premiums, you know, cars that aren't even it. Uh, what do you think? What do you think of this line? Do you like these? I think they are doing a fantastic job in upgrading these castings, tempo-wise, wheel-wise, making them more accurate, which is what we've asked Hot Wheels for years to do, and they are finally listening. So it's good that they are doing that. I'm excited about this line. They've kind of reinvigorated the Fast and the Furious marketing by doing this stuff because it was getting a little stale. Like when you release this car a couple times and the Trino a million times, it's just like, come on, give us something new. Now we're getting Bugattis, RX-8s, new Skyline castings. I mean, all these cars are excellent. So let me know your thoughts on these in the comments. If you've been able to find these in your area, if you've had to pay extra for them like I have on eBay or whatever, um, I really enjoy talking to everyone about these cars in the comments, Furious Collecting. Uh, we've been talking back and forth about the different Fast and Furious cars. He covers a lot of those. Uh, a couple other people I've just been talking to um, about this line in general because it seems that a lot of collectors like the Fast and the Furious line like myself. So I'm really excited to open that NFT garage car soon too. So um, again, I appreciate you watching. I will have links to all the other waves of these that I've unboxed this year and in the past in the uh, description below. So if you want to check out the previous releases and the 910 pack, I can't remember which one it is. Um, I will link those down in the description as well, as well as all the other ones that I've opened too. So I really appreciate you watching the Sam 64 Wheels. Like and subscribe as always, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>